Okay, cool. Hi, uh, I am I am Alan Smith. For those of you who don't know, uh, um, and what I'm going to do is just a real uh, quick recap of my uh, lightning talk, uh, one of the seven by seven talks at the recent CLA summit here. Uh, and what I'm going to talk to you about is something that Sam Taggart and I worked on. I'd been asked a year ago to write this tool, and then I got I said sure I can do this, and then I got crazy busy. And, and then uh, I saw Sam Taggart's presentation uh, at the CLA Summit in Madrid where he was doing scripting very similar to what I needed, and so I passed off a good chunk of the scripting to Sam, who was not here because uh, he lives in Colorado. And then um, I did the packaging to put it into um, an installable labbing tool. Now what this tool does, as I mentioned, is it takes the pain, some of the pain out of making uh, UIs and actor framework. So you have an actor that you want to be a UI, and so you, you, ha you have actor core show its front panel, and you put controls on there, and that's fine. You're using a, if you want to put down indicators, then you want to use events to update your indicators based on messages you receive in the UI. And so normally what you have to do is you put the indicator on the front panel. You have to go to pre-launch init and uh, you know add an event there, you know create an event there, and then you have to go to stop core and you put the you know destroy the event there, and then you do other additional, other additional event work. It's just kind of a drag. It's very tedious. So we wrote a tool to make it better. Um, so what happens is, you know, and, and eventually I would love to roll this into the shipping AF tool set, but that would require having a conversation with some folks at NI. Uh, so maybe someday. But for now what you have is you can go to tools, right? And you can go, all right, I'm going to create actor from template. Because we do start with a template. In all scripting, you're supposed to start with a template. And so we have a template that's the basic layout of what we think a UI should look like. And you can go ahead and create that actor. And tool pops up. All my random things are called Bob. That was both of my grandfathers. Um, this tool will actually give you a couple of different template options. And I have a couple of use cases for different templates I might want to do. But this is the UI template. And click Create Actor, and it taps into the AF Project Provider tools, uh, and it goes and it makes you a new actor, just like a regular actor, except it inherits from this template. What do you get in this template? So this template gives you an actor core, okay, which is already built out with. Uh, let me stop that. Wrong keys. So let's use a mouse. Um, so it's already built out with you know the event structure and you know grabbing the events out of private data and registering for them and all that good stuff that you need to do. Um, there is a pre-launch in it. Um, pre-launch in it already has, as you can see, I already have a stop event, and then we've got a couple of hooks for putting other stuff in. There's this destroy events VI where you can go and knock your events down when you're done and don't need them anymore. Uh, we are actually doing the, the you know, if my actor fails at create, we can unwind all of our references, which is a nice thing uh, to do um, uh, for you know reference management. Um, and then stop core, of course, just calls that VI. So, so that's what this basic template looks like. Now, I'm going to go over to. Um, I'm actually not going to play with Bob. I've got a another actor that I've already done, and this actor I went ahead and. I went ahead and added this display command thing that I want to have happen. I'm going to get some, some data that's going to come in and update a, a, a string indicator. Um, so there's a little bit of pre-work that I didn't want to waste time on in the lightning talk. Um, but I'll go up. The idea is that you know, someone will type something into this input string. You'll click the OK button, which will make this string to display message happen, which will update an indicator. Okay. So um, oh, look, I need to do a quick drop. We'll make a string indicator. This is my 2017 VM. It's my base VM that I don't use for a lot of. Um, I don't. I don't do a lot of project work here. I spawn this off and I do projects in it, and that's where I actually make things happen. So stop bugging me. Um, okay. So now I have this string indicator, right? And now I have this add event support. And if I could click on add event support, LabVIEW turns and does its thing. And it all takes a minute. Theory, okay, it's very quick. Um, and now, if I go in here, you can see, you know, now I have this event string. How do I get this? Uh, you will very soon be able to download it. Uh, I have one bug that I need to work out. I need to talk to Darren about it. Um, 
Yeah. Because we're trying to tag, we're trying to tag, and the tagging not working right, and and we're we want to we want to tag these indicators so you don't can't do this twice by mistake. This guy's reinsert, right? Oh yeah. Tagging and Okay. Okay. That's so. So it's going to take longer than seven minutes because Darren's helping with the problem. But we'll talk. With, he and I will talk this through offline. In the meantime, what you get is, hey, look, we went ahead and made the event. And then, you know, in pre-launch in it, uh, our brooming, we're not happy with our brooming, um, but it works, right? So, you know, there I've made the string event. We've added it to the private data. So, you know, in our destroy user event, um, you know, hey, we've got the event string. Let me go ahead and destroy. Um, and now what I can do is I can go into string display, and I can go all right. And I can go to generate user event. Let's go ahead and insert that. Um, string event. I am not the fastest lab programmer in the world. That would be Darren, except he's retired. And I can wire that up, and I'm good to go. And now, Close all that out. And if I call my launch string display, and that VI comes up, ta-da! <laughs> yeah. So that's um, that's going to save. I have been using this tool in my own work. I was using, you know, early versions of it where I was just copying that template, and God, that saved me a bunch of time. And then I was doing this and saved a bunch of time. And it's just this is this is great, and I'm really Really looking forward to getting it into your hands. Is it in the works to have uh, any scripting for the user event code you have to write to them? Or is that always going to be custom? Yeah, it's always going to have to be custom okay. because we can give you the event, but we can't tell you what you're going to do, what to do with it. Right. Eventually, you're going to fire the user event code. Somewhere, but I don't know where, and I can't predict that. Okay. So, so that, that's the one thing that you have to do, but that's the one thing about all of this that's unique. Everything else is repetitive grunt work, which is what scripting is for. Okay. So. Jeremy, he fired the update string user event in the like fully in one point. So he clicked the button, sent a message, yeah. received the message, thing happened. But it could happen anywhere. It could literally be in the same, it could be on the actor core, it could be in a message VI, it could be in some other VI, it could, hand, it could be in handle last stack. You know, we don't, we don't know where we're going to trigger that event, so we can't predict it, so therefore we can't script it. Um, but uh, we do know, in terms of making the event structure, all the support for it, we know where those artifacts can go. So we have this tool soon. We promised it at the end of September, and it's already in November because Sam and I both have, you know, customers that pay us. So <laughs> that that has to take. And, 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 and I have and I have a child who dances ballet like crazy. So yeah, there goes my free time. Um, <clears throat> Soon, very, very soon. I'm pushing hard on getting this out the door to you guys. If Darren can help me solve my problem, um, we'll have it up by the end of the month. And that's just because it'll take time to post it. Alan, <coughs> the pre-launch event on, like if it airs out, it'll close the, the user event reference? Oh, yeah, yeah. Let me show you that. Um, well, and is that not done just like by default in Docsport or? Well, okay, so here's your problem. So here's your problem. And this actually, this is, this is now outside the scope of the lightning talk, so my lightning talk time was seven minutes, so we'll talk about something else now. This is a, this is a real thing. Um, and it, it does get talked about in the class briefly, although, of course, I screwed it up in the, in the, I, I, the imagery is wrong for that section of the class. So the idea is... This is before it started. I'm starting the actor up. Yeah, I forgot. You know, I, 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 I make a bunch of, of you know, references, and then I fail, and I've got to unwind my references. So, so usually for UI, that's not going to be a problem because I think if you fail to make your 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 user event, something really serious is wrong. Um, <laughs> and usually you're not inheriting from something that makes other events, so that's yeah. probably not a challenge. But but really, what you're supposed to do, the way the canonical way to do it is, you make all your events at your level. Then you try to make your parents' events, or your parents' references. If those don't work out, if either of those don't work out, you have to unwind what you've done. And that's what we do in pre-launch init. So this is, this is a good pattern in general. For, I don't do it all the time myself, 
but if I know or suspect that I'm inheriting from something that is also going to create references, then I want to... In my mind, stop score always happens, but... Stop score does yeah. not always happen. It doesn't happen after pre launching it, and I am so going to put that somewhere in the um, actor framework badge exam. Thank you. That badge exam is already almost impossible. Uh, it, oh it, is, it, is, it, is all okay. it is almost impossible because there are a number of errors crept in during the process of somehow getting it from my brain out onto computers. And I we're not provided a passing it, but I was ridiculously confused. There were a couple of questions that actually got miskeyed where where okay. you had to answer wrong to pass the question. That's and a couple okay. other things that were just I mean, just got broken I somehow. Like, I should be able to pass this right. I taught this class with Alex. Nope. Uh, you know, I, there, there, we, we have we have we have edited all we have edited all of the offending questions. Okay, so it's better. Now. So it, it should it, as soon as Nathaniel's done turning the crank, it should be better. And I don't know where they are in that process. And I'm writing new questions that hopefully and I and, and I'm not even going to try to assess blame because I'm sure some of it was me. Some, you know. <laughs> Honestly, compared to the other badges, that one was pretty good. Yeah. I was going for something that, that was actually a, a challenge. The question so, absolutely made sense for you and no actor fighter. Yeah. So thank you for that. But yeah, there was, we actually went and looked, and you can go, it was, there was like one question that nobody was getting right. And we went and looked at it, I was like, oh, because it's Ms. Keene. <laughs> <laughs> you can't pass this one unless you try to answer wrong. And so we said, we said there were a few other things like that that we fixed, cool. and a couple things that were really not, really not clear in some of the question was asked. So I just spent the last month, you know, my free time last month cleaning those up. And, uh, you know, I, I, uh, on behalf of the team, I apologize. And, you know, I'll, I'm sure some fraction of them are my errors. All, all the badges need some. Yeah. yeah. Um, it <laughs> should be better now or very, very soon, and it will have more questions yeah. that hopefully we'll, we'll you know, We'll make sure we take a closer look at before we put out for, for public consumption. Yeah, I don't know if they are publicly available yet, but I think they are. The AF badge is available. Yeah. Because well, um, our, our fail rate was really embarrassing. But we, we fixed that. Well, that's the hardest one. Yeah, yeah I mean, you're preparing it to like lab you environment. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Other than like measure me, bug me, we There's another one that was really. So, 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 for those of you who are wondering, like, like how I know about this is I actually got contracted to, to do that, to write those questions for the badge assessment. And so, and yeah, so some things didn't go as well as I would have liked. And, and it's a long time. Yeah. It's, I, have a, I have a newfound appreciation for writing multiple choice questions, multiple choice tests that are actually hard. <laughs> it's it's non-trivial. It's a non-trivial exercise. Um, okay, any questions on this? I, uh, if you want an early version, I can give it to you now. Happy to see that I flash drive. I'll have to give it to you now. Um, or I'll mail it to you. Email it to me. Email me, I'll mail it back to you, or give me a flash drive or something. But we'll do it offline. <laughs> all right, I'll hook Craig up. Okay, thanks, guys. That's all I got.